here's here's a here's a uh, question for you. How often do you like you ever use TikTok? I've like, never had a TikTok. Never had a TikTok. Oh, interesting. Because yeah. that's that's where a lot of these like you know uh, underground subgenres have kind of transcend being not all of them uh and something like regalia isn't as big enough yet but like a lot of these like subgenres have kind of become more you know mainstream via just getting like tiktok recognition like something like plug plug and b that stuff wasn't you know uh nearly on the same level that it is now that it was in 2020 but like tiktok like amplifying a lot of like older songs and stuff really catapulted it into into yeah. like a, a mainstream consciousness you know because I just, i've never I, I gave up on instagram <laughs> a long long they're they're like, all they're they're all bad they're all the same and they're all bad but yeah. i just that was a question because I'm, i was thinking in my head of like i've already searched some of the names and like you know Dev has had like some some stuff like Warrior Swag was you know had some traction on there and stuff yeah. like that. But I was just thinking of like when is I need to make a TikTok with an Ame song in it because when he does blow up, I gotta prove I was there first. Like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that and was... just in the back like a video from 2020. Like yeah, I was using his sounds when he had like 30 plays. Right, dude, exactly. that was fucking La Yosh. <laughs> dude, I would let yo. She's getting thirty plays. Do that shit now. He's gonna be up. He's gonna have to be up. I don't know. Like ultralight can't keep like holding him down forever. When when Layosh has the um when when Layosh steps out with the fucking um the the fucking baby Santana feature, and then <laughs> and then the next level up he has like the E feature, and then like the next level up he has like the fucking Uzi feature. We're gonna know exactly. We're gonna know exactly where it came from. Th- this conversation right here. Exactly. exactly. We should be saving the shit for it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. On on that note, since we've already kind of started uh, yeah. into into the conversation, this is your Living Off Borrow Time podcast for the week. Uh, I am Caleb, aka Optimal Audio. You guys know who I am by now. No Patrick on the show this week, but I do have a very special guest, someone I've been wanting to talk music with for a while. Uh, it's Santorse. How's it going, man? Going, Thank you for having me on the show. Of course, of course, going, going, going pretty well. I am thrilled to talk to you specifically about our topic today because, for one, if you know Santorse's work on RYM, you know that they are a uh, you know list maker extraordinaire. Um, and don't just take my word for it; take every comment on all of uh, his lists and in his comment box saying that your lists are goaded, <laughs> and then <if> they're all <laughs> right. They're all correct. I mean, That's anything <laughs> you could, anything you could want in a, you know, uh, SoundCloud adjacent context for for rap music. You know, you've got your, you've got your R and B and plug fusions. You got your sample drill. You've got your, uh, you know, your the the rage list, which is a, is a huge list. Help hit. hit made it, helped rage become a genre for sure. You know, you've got like your. Uh, you know, like spacey dream plug shit, the darker plug stuff, you know, drill music, what, whatever. 
obviously like Asian rock, which has, you know, been a new sensation. So anything that you could think of, uh, you know, he's, he's got a list for, um, and we're going to be talking about one specific subgenre today. Although we, we throw in some other stuff as always, you know, these episodes aren't always on topic, but we've got a, uh, a discussion about regalia today, which is something that I've been wanting to talk about this podcast for months. I alluded to it in the mid year a little bit, but you know, Patrick hadn't listened to much of it, so this is a, a much better way of that. Would be hilarious. <laughs> you should have made him do that. Just, just for the mid year, yeah, that would have been great. What, what would be the first song that we should have that we should have played? We should have played just at the four from the start. Ame like abrasive vocals. <laughs> like, because that's not even what like most of it sound like. So it's just like you start him off with Ame, and I just want to see like his reaction from there. <laughs> Fucking chipmunk then, ass vocal. <laughs> yeah, then give him like Jace, like where he like layers his shit with like three octaves. How how long? Okay, here's a here's a like an inside. Here's like an inside baseball question. Yeah. How long? Like from when you first heard Jace, how long did it take for you to know that his name was actually pronounced Jace? I just typed his name for like a good three months and my friend told me his name was Jace and I was like, sweet, but like, what is his like, right. I'm about to say username, <laughs> but like, yeah, <laughs> fucking because yeah, it took me a long time. Like when I first heard him in like 2020, I would look up his name and in like the suggestions, it would be like Jace, but it would be spelled like J A C E, like how it actually like phonetically sounds. Yeah. But then I was just like, what? What the hell? Like, no, his name is pronounced, and I would like try to say his name like it, it's spelled. Mm-hmm. But no one ever told me until I, you know, heard enough of his music that his name was pronounced Jace for a while. So that's another, it's another ridiculous, another L to add to my card, right? Right. I- yeah, going, I used to fucking. Oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna say I used to think he's Isaiah TG. Sometimes I thought somebody just like fucked up the the name of the upload, <laughs> like way back. Uh, yeah, I saw a YouTube video like one time where it was just like uh, the 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 Jace versus like uh, Isaiah TG like beef, and it was literally just because oh, their names sounded similar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know anything about the. This the, the Slay World soldiers beef or whatever I don't know like I don't keep up <laughs> that all I know is that Jace has beef with people I guess or people have beef with Jace I don't yeah. know apparently he's not even like in like with the regalia like kids no more so I don't even know he, he, he got that deal he out you're saying he's like the diamonds on my dick of the 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 <laughs> scene is what you're saying is just everybody hates him and he's he's undoubtedly important but everybody hates him <laughs> who's the fucking high C then. <laughs> That's Ame. That's absolutely <laughs> Ame. No question. Ame's high C? That's crazy. Oh, that, well, be, they, Ame they, on those beats would be hilarious. It would be uh, hilarious. Now I'm thinking of like, I'm thinking of like he would have to, the produce the producing aspect of it too would definitely need to be in there. May, may, maybe it's like reset or something like that. But we'll get into that. Yeah, already getting off track early on, but <laughs> the long-winded uh, way of saying that we really want to talk about regalia—it's one of my favorite scenes, um, you know, right now, and it's probably my favorite scene of 2022 in terms of like a, you know, new shit that's been permeating uh, in, in in underground rap music. Um, you know, on on I would say has an ear for accessibility but it isn't quite there yet i think there have been songs that have come close to things that i would get consider getting traction obviously this sort of thing shares a like a a brotherhood a kinship with like plug and and plug scenes and kind of like plug and b but also kind of has like a orchestral and and like you know, Chicago early 2010s drill influence. So if you wanted to just kind of expound on what the regalia sound is to someone who's never heard it, like what would that be in your mind? So really, really quickly, like regalia, like is like a short description, like orchestral trap. Um, it kind of grew from like the plug, plug and be underground. It it like depends on like which artist you're like looking at and like which catalog you know you go back all the way into. 
but um so it kind of came from the plug plug and b sphere and it takes a lot of like influences from yeah that like early like 2010s like chicago drill kind of like triplets with the percussion and stuff so yeah it's it's really just to comment on like the accessibility i think it's kind of it's not accessible because it's like an absurd idea like the fact that this was what people decided to like start making and that this would be the style like why are we doing this but it's sick it's so fucking good you're saying it's because it's like a genre mismatch or something like that. Yeah, just like like who would have like like how did we get to the point where like you had people like making plug and B and then they were like, Yeah, we're just gonna turn up all the like the the strings, we're gonna turn up all that kind of stuff and yeah, we're gonna just be making orchestral music now. Like it's how did that happen? Like it, it's such a weird uh transition from the plug underground, but it's sick as fuck. And um yeah, there's a lot of tweets um, out there, like Royal, uh, who's like the main like producer. He, or they, um, they pretty much like started this. I would say, like along with like some other people in like the Hills Collective, uh, back in like what, like probably like early 2020 sometime. But um, their whole thing is like, yeah, we're not plug. Like this is like regalia is its own thing, and I've never heard of like regalia referred to as a plug subgenre or anything like that or a drill subgenre. It's really like its own thing, and it takes elements from both at times. So you're saying that mm. if it, it mm. would be, it's more than just a scene. You think it should be probably considered like a, a genre to its own its own entity versus getting lumped in with a lot of plug or you know drill uh discussions i mean like the stuff that is really drill influenced and like drill in like the loose sense of like you know when you go back to like chicago drill era stuff before like the rhythmic frameworks really took over a lot of it was just abrasive snares a lot of triplets, like just stuff getting thrown in there for the sake of it being aggressive. And like, that's dope. But when you take influence from that, you know, you're not really still drill. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like if I, I've heard a lot of like regalia beats like get called drill, I've heard them get called plug and B. But it really is just like just straight trap. And it focuses on like having all of those strings and stuff like that. I've heard it called rage, too. I don't know about that one, but. There's yeah, times I, like maybe, maybe if I'm, I'm going to be generous, there's there's a little bit of overlap at times. The the collective that um, like Royal Reset, We Love You Ty, that they're a part of also has like a lot of Rage and Plug and B producers in there. So you could probably go back and find Rage beats from all of those guys. Probably. I, I haven't heard any, but I wouldn't doubt it. No, I, I wouldn't be surprised either. And I think that there's kind of a... Whenever genres can easily be like grouped together or subgenres can easily be grouped together that's kind of i'm not surprised that the more popular sound is is what some people would choose to label it as like oh it's just like it's kind of like rage you know like if i'm trying to get yeah. somebody to listen to regalia and i'm trying to describe it i wouldn't describe it like that but i wouldn't be surprised if someone's like oh you know it's it's kind of like rage like it's kind of like plugging you know like we're just gonna um, yeah. I'm going to sell it to you. But to me, and you've mentioned this to me like off air b- before, it really has a video game like fantastical element too that you hear in these beats. And, and one thing that I always think about is, you know, this whole summer when I've just been like, you know, mainlining this stuff <laughs> into, <laughs> into my veins from my entire SoundCloud likes uh, is it has this like, really 90s 2000s video game aesthetic and you can hear it in even something like the the royal production tag or you know like these different beats that you'll hear like ame or like north zan like go over they have a very they have a very cool and kind of like almost like science fiction fantasy vibe to them. Um, but then they're also like rapping and given like these really cool melodies and like distorting the vocals and shit. So uh, yeah, the vocal distortion is always sick. Always sick. And is that one effect at the start? The, the, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Was, I don't even know what it is, <laughs> but um, I saw, I'm saucy Hall on Instagram talk about it. Like, what the fuck is that? And then they're like, shh, don't give it up. Don't give it up. 
<laughs> it's it's definitely easy to figure out, but it's just that's, like um, that's just so kind of funny. That's one of the great YouTube channels, by the way, that you just shouted oh, yeah. out. So absolutely. God's what, work they're doing. God's work. God's work. Been doing it for years too. Also, uh, RIP to New Trap Radio, but that's a whole that's a whole different uh, whole different channel. But RIP to New Trap Radio. You talk about you kind of had mentioned also that like maybe some of that is because the the people in the scene kind of grew up on video games and grew up on those type of video games. Yeah, I think we're at the point with, like, kids who make plug and, like, plug and B and, like, just in that sphere, right? We're at that point where, like, these kids grew up on Kingdom Hearts right? in Final Fantasy. And, like, mm-hmm. it's just kind of funny that it's coming back into the music now and that this is, like, the way that people are nostalgic for that. Like, the whole, like, regalia stuff, like, the name might come from that, but, like, the the whole aesthetic is, like, built around all that, like, fantastical, like, I don't know, imagery and stuff like that. Like the whole aesthetic is around that. Like everybody has like an Organization 13 cover photo or some shit. Or it's it's just so like absurd. Like how 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 did we get here? <laughs> like yeah. it's so great too. Like I never thought that there would be this like orchestral connection with like drill music. But yeah, if you kind of turn that up to like 10, like maybe like a really like early like Chief Keef song. Like, that had, like, all those really, like, poppy, like, kind of strings and stuff. Like, yeah, you probably would end up with this. You know, and right. it's just cool that it comes from a more melodic edge, like, having, like, come kind of from, like, the plug and B side of things. So, like, if Sora ever made beats, like, this is what they would be making, is what, is, is what you're saying. Yeah, Sora mainlined into, like, <laughs> fucking purity or some shit. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, this is exactly what that is. <laughs> some of it also gives me like, and I know this has been referenced before in rap, but like, some of it also gives me like a Zelda vibes, which is earlier, anyway. So it's probably not with what's being referenced. But you know, if Link was ever just like absolutely going crazy, like <laughs> I feel like Link would be in the studio going going crazy. But you mentioned you know we had briefly touched on. The, like the, the one of the big tokens or one of the big like faces in regalia which was jace and yeah. in terms of like they're not involved much with the sound anymore but kind of how do you how do you think the sound initially caught on was it jace's like involvement initially or was it just kind of like coincidental? Um, like, what do you, what do you think made the sound catch on? Like in you know twenty twenty one or something? You know, I, I think like Jace's regalia songs are definitely the biggest ones, but he's also like the biggest artist in general. So like they're going to be the biggest ones no matter what. Right. But he definitely put and it took credit for a lot of that sound and like referred to like regalia producers as like his producers and stuff like that and they also at, like before that threw around the word like top kid like saying that that's like a term to refer to their music that's like very inspirational and stuff like that which doesn't always line up with regalia but they definitely had their own idea of what they wanted to do with their music and like it being like inspirational and shit like that and then like regalia like the sound I don't know how it got to Jace, but, you know, it fit, like, instrumentally. And so, like, you know, like, a lot of Royal Anson beats, a lot of um, We Love You Thai beats, all those, like, really found, you know, like, a lot of success with Jace. But since then, like, I don't really think they've been involved with the genre in any way. It's kind of mm-hmm. weird. Like, um, I guess they have beef or some shit. I don't fucking know. Like, I, I can't keep up with Jace beef. I can't keep up with SoundCloud plug and me beef. Yeah, uh, it, it really is just a new thing every day. And so I'm just in, involved with the music. But yeah, I think like probably if you want to consider like really early dev stacks, regalia, there's a lot of stuff that like samples Kingdom Hearts or like inspired by that kind of stuff, which mm-hmm. doesn't really have as much drill in the like the percussion but that stuff definitely to me would be called regalia and i don't know if that has anything to do with jace royal kind of connection right right there yeah right no and also in terms of popularity and or potential for popularity for the sound do you think that i know this is something that you had mentioned to me as well like is there are there 
these adjacent styles that people might go to first that would have a that has like a a segue into regalia like as an example kind of what what like what yeet has done with like some rage stuff that that kind of like fusing you know rage and 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 plug and things like that and kind of changing styles do you think that there's going to be some like some offshoot of that where it's like if yeet starts like doing some regalia shit on like their their next project that's going to like lead to a bigger evolution of the sound or is it all just is it too separate you know like i'm doing a bad job setting up the question basically but it's not you're good what could what could lead to before we get into like the artist like what could really lead to the sound evolving is there evolution potential or is it just going to not that it needs to but is it is it just going to stay the the way that it is and then bigger artists will start you know filtering that into their sound it already seems like a genre that's like not outside of like the core like seeing the core artists like you'll have a couple regalia beats on your ep Mm -hmm. or whatever and i think it might remain that way but if it really the only thing that I could see right now that would really like take this whole style and like elevate it would be just like focusing on the aesthetic first. I think the fact that it's like Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts inspired and like that's that's really like integral to like the scene and stuff is like definitely its way out. And I could see people like latching on to that. Like I, I just like the music, but oh, like sure. I think the music is good on its own. That, that, like that, even like somebody like North Zan doesn't have anything to do with that, but uzi i think just had a track which i, I believe sampled final fantasy i'm not like 100 percent on that but it was called that and yeah that was a, effectively a regalia beat be kind of cool if it was really old because that that whole project was like old shit right yeah and, and i didn't know when i mean i haven't done enough digging on it but I, I don't know when that was recorded but that definitely to me the first thing i and the first thing i noticed when reading about like reading the reception from like average people like about that song like youtube comments shit was was just like oh man like these snare rolls are amazing like i love like the vibe of this beat and you had like one or two people being in the comments like yeah this is a regalia beat and i was like yes <laughs> oh that's cool i didn't even peep that <laughs> yes it is it's cool yeah um, no i saw people it, calling that drill so it's just like yeah like yeah, I can, people are making that connection sure, absolutely and it's it's not that like you know we're we're so we're a lot more like you know tapped in in relation to the various different you know genres and subgenres whereas you know the first thing that someone might hear it was like oh i've heard something like this it was like a drill beat or yeah you know know, for us we're like no you know actually it's a it's a (laughs) (laughs) it's a cool connection to make i'm not dissing the connection i just think it's like like such like how did we get here again like right (laughs) it's it's a very you made a great point in between all of my like talking which is it's a it's a really great aesthetic first and foremost and not that that matters because the music has been so strong but it's got like a very recognizable uh, aesthetic which is very important when kind of like amplifying your your genre so yeah yeah and like uh instagram comments and stuff like that or like on posts like if you like post yourself or like your beat clips or whatever everybody's commenting like emperor regal (laughs) <laughs> uh, guardian like i'm people are like so all in with it and like that's the thing that's how it's going to get taken seriously if you're all in and you don't give a fuck about whether people think it's corny or cringy or whatever like people are taking this shit seriously and that that's what you got to do you know what's funny is and rap has had this connection for a long time um rap and, and anime have had a connection for a long time and this is relevant because I've been watching a lot of different anime lately, but this is definitely a style of music that would fit so well with certain types of anime. For so sure. well. Like, it, the, the aesthetic isn't that different. Obviously, you know, Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, you know, you're already kind of, like, almost there. The The aesthetic really isn't that different, and now I just need a clip of, like, like a fucking like North Zan song over, over like different types of anime, like nineties, two thousands anime. Like, dude, 
So someone's got to make that edit. I, I'm going to be looking for it. Yeah. We need regalia AMVs. That's really <laughs> what we need. <laughs> I, I I think that'll take us to the next level. I'm serious. Like, I think that'll, we need North Zan High School, you know, like, or some shit, some kind of anime like that. Fire. Re- regalia OVA. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna do. This is gonna work, dog. That's actually so funny. I've I've now. I'm gonna look for this. Someone on the internet has to have thought of this before. But yeah, I'm not that original. That would be, so. wait, wait, North Zan AMVs would actually be fucking sick. <laughs> it has like. I haven't two, seen an AMV in ten years, but like, yeah. fuck it. I'll it, I'll I'll start that shit up again. It has like two views on YouTube, and I'm like, nah, I got this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it ten times. Yeah. Uh, so. Overall, if you want to get into some of the artists, um, because I think we've done a pretty good job of kind of summarizing what the sound would be. Um, We've already touched on Jace, too. Like, um, for sure. Like, what do you think are some of the best, like, Jace songs? It's like, basically, if people wanted to go and listen to this episode and, like, make a playlist on SoundCloud of of, of some of the songs, um, like, what are a couple we could recommend from, like, each artist that they could throw in and give a good background of, of the song. So like in terms of Jay's, like what are some, what's some shit that you recommend? Uh, Bit My Hand for sure. Top of the World. God is another good one. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they have a unreleased song called Regalia, which is like on SoundCloud. Like you'll find that shit. It's probably got like half a million plays, but like that shit's also really good. But outside of, I don't think Jace has more than 10 regalia songs, honestly. Like, maybe, maybe 12, right. 15, but like, really, that's it. Like, their, their time with the sound is pretty much done. And right. that, that's it, a bit of a shame. It would just be for background. I kind of agree with you. I think yeah. I like, I think I like Jace more on, on that sort of sound than some of the other stuff. While I don't, like, I have nothing against, like, what he's doing otherwise, but I kind of like, uh, I kind of like that sound. Um, I think that that fits him. Although you know some some other songs like Kamir and you know blah 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 things that also like got popular, um, they they do sound good. W- what is your like uh, what's your uh, five five six take? Do you like that song? Yeah, that song's great. Yeah, it's happy it's, it blew up. Yeah, good for good, good for him. It's a good sure. song. I, I first heard, it, I was like, this is kind of goofy. But then I heard it again, and I was like, no, this is this is pretty hard. I, I I'm into it. So um, yeah. Um, yeah, with, with, with Jace, um, you know, whatever they're on now, I'm not really too sure. I, I'm not like the biggest Jace aficionado. Like I just haven't delved all the way back into like their older stuff and they right. just have like a ton of fucking mixtapes that like a lot, like a couple hundred singles on rate your music. I feel like that's way too many, but it's, it's too much for me to delve into. So whenever I get around to it, I will, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like they're on this wave anymore. No. They should really reconsider that. Because I think these beats are great, and I think people want to hear these beats as evidenced by like the Uzi shit. No question. I just think it's something that a lot of people like haven't been exposed to unless you're like really have your ear to the ground. But yeah, you know. definitely not. The shit is underground, man. For uh, absolutely. Um, but I think we kind of alluded to Devstacks before. Devstacks, yeah. who had a song blow up on TikTok recently, Wear Swag, which is one of my favorites of the year. Um, also 4PF, which is also one of my favorites of the Fucking year. Fucking great songs. Amazing songs. By the way, side sidetrack, uh, 4PF, <laughs> my, my favorite bar in that song is that he's like flexing that girls want to date him. Um, <laughs> just absolute comedy moment. Like that's like one of the one of the flexes in the chorus. It's like it's like that, a, that is fucking heartfelt. Yeah, that that's is a, that's a wholesome flex to God right there. Little kid from Massachusetts, you know, like only saying wholesome shit for the kids. I think that's a good thing, good message for the kids. I didn't know he was from Mass, by the way. Yeah, he's from Mass or somewhere or some shit like that. Something but like you know, J- Dev Stax's flexes, like, are just very, like, he has very simple bars. I, I was reading an article on like regalia shit, and um, they mentioned a connection between Dev Stax and Gunna, and I don't know if I see that, but I see the fact that Dev Stax kind of which will say very like simple stuff they really like let their whatever they say like kind of merge in with the beat because they're so like they have such a big hand in like the production and stuff like dev stacks used to produce for like summers and like people in that stuff like do plug and be shit Mm -hmm. but um yeah they're not like too in your face and that works so fucking well with like regalia shit because all you want to hear are like the the fucking you want to hear the kingdom Hearts sample you don't want to 
You know, you don't want to go too crazy. Right, right. It's kind of yeah. like a lot of devs that says, while I still think they have like a distinct voice, um, yeah. it's kind of like a window dressing in yeah. some cases. Like they know exactly when to do that sort of thing, um, which I'm definitely, yeah. I'm definitely into. And, and, and a, a recent song that I've been playing all weekend uh, is that song with, with Slumps, Cut Her Off. Oh, Cut Her Off? Just came out. That which shit is, is great. That's a gorgeous beat. Shit I, is great. I can't stop listening to it. Um, uh, DevStacks has some fucking hits, dude. Like, DevStacks is great. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I think it totally has to do with the fact that they're, like, in tune with the prod and with the production and shit. Mm-hmm. But, like, Trey Songs, that song. And that, yeah, that was, a early, that was an early one. That shit too. from, like, 2020. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was an early one Man. from in terms of the sound um that that's a good song also yeah. heart heartbreaker is a really good song heartbreaker is a big one like, and um they have, they have those two tapes right now the Noah's one and two it's little mm-hmm. eps or whatever those shits are great there's some great songs on there i don't even know that pulled up i forget the name of the songs but there was, was one, it? Like, do you understand was there was one? one on now they know us too um i'm trying to think there was i mean the title track i like a lot and i like um Freaking the one with Dolly, I like too. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Those like are a lot of it wasn't regalia, but it, like it's good that like DevStacks is there to like really bridge things because mm-hmm. like they're doing work with like SGP West, they're doing work with Dollywood and like fucking like Vontae and shit, right? And, like, yeah. uh, fucking Tana, right? On uh, what's the other song? Uh, uh Vivian, uh, two, right? Vivian two, yeah. Yeah, 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 they're doing you know great work like b- making like regalia make sense with everything else going on, and they also, like, I think that really helps it like you know bridge that gap. Yeah, they have songs with a number because they have the, the song with Angelus too, the that clutch song. Oh, yeah, uh, that's a really good that's a really good one. Um, shout out to Angelus, one of my favorite songs of the year, Paradise. Angelus is sick, Angelus is really sick. Um, Paradise, I gotta tap back in though, I haven't like tapped in in a while. It's like that side of the underground. Right, right. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I songs like Vivian Soldier, like Warrior Swag, 4PF, um, I, the most recent one, Cut Her Off, which is, like I said, is a beautiful song. Gotta put Trey songs in there. Gotta put Trey, Trey songs. songs is absurd. Fair enough. And you mentioned this, but do you think part, so you think part of like Death Stacks is like inherent success is the fact that they kind of have this background with the production used to work with artists like summers you know where they kind of for sure have they're about making like the good music first like the the, the sonic palette is always going to be like good and consistent on a dev stack song yeah like you know they're a great rapper and that's because they're a great producer right right like, it's, it's just the ear for everything and just like knowing like um like when I listen to like a DevStacks verse, everything is very like precisely on the beat, and not in like a way where like they have good like like rhythm with like everything that they say. It's like very simple. It's like dun 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 dun. Like it's just for the whole shit, <laughs> and like that's just very like a- appealing when you have like all the strings that are shit going crazy and stuff. I feel like uh, most of DevStacks songs, he kind of picks a tempo. And then the song is just all in, always in that tempo. Like if you listen to Where Your Swag, it's very hypnotic because it's like the same tempo. And we, then from the first five seconds of that song, you know if you're gonna like it or not because it's like a, it kind of brings you in quickly, and you're just on that same wavelength. Like the the orchestral stuff and like the beat, it never really alters very much from like the the verses to the hook but it's the same thing 4pf same thing um another song we talked about where i think it's similar thing but i feel like like in 4pf like with the horns and shit it kind of never yeah. it kind of doesn't go away from that consistency that's uh, a trend in the recent beats for sure just like that. having like a, a one loop and like having it just right. do it like cut her off did the same shit yeah 100 percent great like yeah just started and fucking finished and like that yeah. that's great for a, it, for like a dev stack specific kind of sound right. like that works so well it, it works really well i think that's probably the strongest attribute in dev stacks music because even when like slumps comes on that song 
you don't you wouldn't really know Rome hearts tea yeah you wouldn't really know except slump sounds very different so but is still able to kind of uh you know weave his way through the through that beat which you know slumps is definitely someone that even watching interviews with him like a year and a half ago two years ago like they always had an ear to the underground like slumps was talking about i mean you know pretty much came from it too like yeah and and watching Slump's interviews like right around the time like Antisocial came out, I think at that time there were, I think at that time like Alive had just came out from Yeet, and like so he was still a it's nobody. Yeah, he was still an he was still like a nobody. Meanwhile, I was like I mean myself and some other people on oh, I'm just out here losing our minds for some of these <laughs> some of these like Alive <clears throat> and pre Alive Yeats. Yeah, you shook shit up. <laughs> But but Slumps was talking about, you know, you guys got to listen to Yeet, like, you know, his a live album just dropped just crazy, da 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 And I was thinking about, like, they've always been super tapped in, so they definitely have a few songs that I could see be in the regalia lane, because they, they're they definitely listening to all this shit. Yeah, Slump has had a few of these good beats, like had a We Love You <laughs> Tie beat a couple times. Right. I you know, Honestly, I'm kind of blanking on, like, their other, like, ventures into the sound but yeah they need to put down the rage beats they need to start picking up these shits right. needs to give reset a call 100 you know, because ask for a pack or something because like dude like this shit is dope because it's not like slump still couldn't do what he does over these beats because like the it's not that different in terms of like an approach you know like one song that i really liked he he tapped benji for a beat on his newest album um 20 ball was oh shit yeah that's a great and it was on the ep excuse me it was on the ep before the album um so that's how i heard it initially because the album was too damn long i'm not gonna lie to you it's like 21 songs too many but the ep was I, I liked a lot and that was like my standout song on it and he he did a a, a typical slumps type uh song over that beat and that wasn't like a uh, a regalia beat or anything it was definitely more of like you know plug ish i would say but it had this kind of like aggression to it that i thought would have it kind of sounded like something that like um isaiah would have went over in like the want to be the goat kind of era yeah yeah if, if you know what i'm saying like yeah, that's what it of. sounded like and that's why i liked it so much and benji's like my favorite producer going right now so i was obviously thrilled to oh benji is to like that. gonna be killing it forever you just don't stop. If there was any left a new style, it's crazy. If there was anyone that deserves to blow up, it's Benji Cold as a rapper and a producer. So. <laughs> I mean, like they already got the few like songs with Yeet and stuff, like fucking um Poppin. Oh, for sure. Stuff like that. Like I have really, I'm surprised they haven't like blown up more. But because they because they, they were working yeah. with you know years ago they were working <laughs> with Slay and all that stuff. So they've been they've been on songs like that have gotten you know, either retroactively or in the moment have gotten like a lot of traction. I'm just surprised that they haven't had a song with like Uzi or something yet, you know? Like maybe yeah, the next weird. maybe the next Cardi project in twenty twenty five has like a Benji Cole beat, but you know, like we'll we'll see. Yeah, I think uh, Yeet is kinda of past it, but at this point I really do want to see yeah. like another like full Yeet Benji collab, Asian Rock Rage. I've seen people call that Twizy Rock, which is hilarious. <laughs> the beats which are like <laughs> halfway in between and i'm like i'm i'm, I'm all fucking for it i'm all that's, for whatever name as long as it sticks that's phenomenal well we, we've, shit up. we've talked before and maybe some of you listening will kind of agree with this or disagree how much of like a interesting genre name like asian rock is and how so it's good. someone's gonna like how adding it to or, or trying to make it an official genre distinction is just like gonna get someone canceled <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we were such fucking nerds for um, talking about like making genres official. Like it doesn't matter. Like if it it's recognized by people who use rate your music, there's like five total people using the site. It, Jesus it, Christ! Yeah. You know it doesn't fucking matter. It's like, not. but yeah. yeah, somebody's gonna. There's definitely an issue with Asian rock and plug, and then trying to have that coexist with like actual Asian right. rock music. Right. You care <laughs> about cataloging, but like. Right. Well, I just meant in general, like yeah. in, in the general public, like yeah. if if it, it's not a name that would ever catch on because it's just like 
what the fuck? How do I even present to someone that I'm listening to this? <laughs> like, I, I actually think the opposite. I think because it's called Asian rock, it's going to catch the fuck on. I, it's because like on. all the absurd names catch on. That's plug fair. in B. Plug in B was absurd for 2018. True. As a name. True. That was an absurd name back in the day. Like people ridiculed that. A but bit least- like sex and B is like. Dude, sex and B is like the name for it now and like i i don't know what to how to feel about that i'm just the messenger yeah at least, yeah you're you're all it's sex and B. then like what do you want me to do like I, your, your lists are just the um uh a bridge into the world of whatever uh whatever genre it is so you just gotta you gotta roll with it yeah they, um people were really like aware of the fact that the stuff leading into sex and B and like whatever, like the newer R and B stuff was already around. Right. But uh, you know, shit, like this is the name we really picked, man. Like this is all right, you know. <laughs> well, now we're gonna when I mean, speaking of, I mean, ye, because I can't go, I can't talk about it, I can't do a fucking <laughs> round podcast. I talk about ye. Um, yeah. the the madness song, whenever that comes out, which I need, I need more than air. At this which point. one is that? Um, like the other one they previewed with Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, shit, yeah, yeah. That 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 one, um, that one is definitely that's gonna be. It's huge. It's got a, a lot of traction. Um, I need that song to come out, but that's another one where it kind of has that that vibe. You know, people people called it like R and E. Like, <laughs> I've been seeing oh a lot God. of I've been seeing a lot of funny shit going around. But yeah, oh, that's man, that's a name for everything. But there is a name for everything. But yeah, I guess we've been kind of. I think we gave Death Statics, like, you know, definitely his due. If I guess some Norzan. Oh, yeah, way sidetracked. <laughs> some, some Norzan songs that you think, because Norzan is fucking sick. And we have to give Norzan his due, because he doesn't have that many plays on SoundCloud. And I would like everyone who listens to this to go listen to some Norzan shit. Like, Love Letters, Devil's Paradise, both those yeah. EPs are sick. I listen to fucking... Um, that song Villain off Love Letters, I've listened to that song like a hundred times this year. Oh I've, yeah. I've listened to like Replay and Nobody like a hundred times off that um the Devil's Paradise EP too. So I mean, nothing but good things to say. Yeah, North Sand is definitely. What are some like songs that, that you like and what do you think makes like North Sand's music effective? Oh man. I mean um North Sand is another one that kinda has like a bit of a like a plug and B ish kind of background who's doing the like the regalia shit. And is pretty disconnected from like the aesthetic, like with being like Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts specifically. But like their whole, all their album covers are great. It's um, kind of like everything a, regarding that is like its own aesthetic, which I see Reset doing too. Yeah, it's kind of like a '90s, 2000s, like goth cyberpunk aesthetic in a way. Yeah, I would say. I would say its own like kind of because like you see like Benji like kind of like reincorporating shit like Battle Royale and all that into like stuff like death note like the live movie like into their stuff into their covers and stuff north zen is definitely doing like a similar thing in terms of like the kind of aesthetic but it's you know not as connected to like a single movie or anything like as hyper focused like that but it's dope everything's great kid's got great voice he's got great beats Mm -hmm. yeah he needs to blow up already the, some of their older stuff is more connected with like the Asian rock shit, like me. That's a great song, which is like it's so Asian rock yeah. at this point. It sounds like a Chief Keef song. It's kind of weird. Like you'll right. you'll listen to that and you'll be like, "How the fuck is do people ever call this plug and be?" Or like Love Letters Eclipse is like, yeah, they got some shit like that on there. But um, just their basic like regalia singles, like they're all good. Like EA Moment, F- F- God, Pride. they just dropped God, which oh Pride is I didn't even Pride. Put fucking Pride in there. Pride, Pride is, is great. Pride is one of my favorite songs they've ever made. Pride is fucking absurd. I don't know how they, I don't even know who did that beat. Who did that beat? Uh, um, no, nah, they need a shout out. Uh, Swish, it was Swish, yeah, yeah. Swish, fucking hell. Swish is great. Great, great um, production tag too. Yeah, my my favorite probably has to be um fucking sign up. Sign oh, up is yeah. great. That's a slept on song because it's super like lax, super mellow. It's just the pianos. Right. Yeah. Um. I think Nordzen. Maybe maybe the 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 style of their verses is like um a little. I don't know what's the word like um unapproachable in a way. Maybe maybe that might. It, it's not as like kind of like clear and hooky as something like yeah. a Devstax. But, but like I, when you it, get into regalia, that that's the stuff that really fits. Mm-hmm. 
And I think that they have good hooks too. Like I think that the, I think that the, the hooks on those like two EPs, for example, or like the EA hook, like those are, those are things that still stick out to me in my head where it's like some of the other stuff, like the pride caught on for me just because the beat the first time is amazing. So like you just, you kind of get like locked in with that or like moment, you know, I definitely got locked into via the beat, but you can kind of, I wouldn't say it's like indecipherable, but it's definitely like harder to, but it matches. They have such a good command of like the aesthetic matching with the sound. Because if you look at the covers for each like single, it kind of is, they all work. Like I said, they have this like interesting, I mean, this is an overused term these days, but like, you know, Y2K era, um, aesthetic merged with like, you know, cassette tape, like science fiction horror like stuff and it kind of looks like things that like chrome hearts would steal and put on a t-shirt like that that's what all their like album covers to me uh and single covers on soundcloud look like yeah. so yeah something super- which still legitimately feels like that as opposed to something which felt like copy pasted like printed out the machine like right. label constructed this like i look at like noise and covers and i'm like you know like every single one feels good every single one feels right the music kind of matches because like they're a lot of the regalia stuff really tends into like that darker kind of side of shit which is really good a hundred percent they they also do the like it sort of reminds me of like in 2019 early 2020 when i started listening to like a lot of like jewel set bmb stuff where the aesthetic was such an integral part of the music and so like the darkness and like kind of tortured like nature of the music matched whatever weird shit they were putting on the covers yeah versus this is more of like this is definitely post that and like po but it's kind of like a a cooler more psychedelic you know version of like these like things that would have been labeled drill like five years ago yeah sigil core definitely kind of feels like the same some of the same uh yeah like source material but if you got that through the internet while like if you look at like a north sand cover like these just look like cds they really brings me back to cd era shit Mm -hmm. stuff like that like we need regalia mp3 players like i think that's what we need (laughs) dev stacks mp3 player with wear your swag on it like actually might work the 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 iPod Classic, <laughs> Devstacks iPod Nanos. Yeah. The listeners of the show they don't they don't know about that. <laughs> I, I, you, it's funny you mentioned the genre name. I, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when, when we still used to call like Jewel Set B and B stuff like dark trap because there was no like word for it. Yeah. Like, back in the day. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. Back in the day, I don't think people called shit dark trap. <laughs> like, I think that's definitely like a. A retrospective term but there was a time when that shit all yeah. got called that right yeah oh for sure uh, man, for sure it was, it was a sigil core and shit yeah so yeah that wasn't even I don't not my wheelhouse i don't think until um i don't remember random people on the internet calling it sigil core until fucking 4j it was no longer 4j but i think it was astral at the time got um got like kind of popular off like tiktok stuff yeah definitely. because like i never heard it called i mean now of course this is me like i wasn't really tapped in with what the artists were saying but you know i didn't really know what the names were of course well documented so many beefs in that scene anyway that like uh, i don't know how you can keep up so yeah um i think people are definitely like settled on calling that kind of stuff social core Mm-hmm. I, I know that it, it got lumped sense. in with like a bunch of other terms like surge at some point partially yeah. my fault but i don't know like i mean if Surge not gonna stick citric core gonna stick then you know you know what are you gonna do citric core sticking there was all this in 2020 there was just like a bunch of names that people were throwing out yeah you, like you had like surge being kind of related to like hex uh, like hex and shit like that you had like the no real differentiators between like digicore and hyperpop but now there's like clear differentiators like it was it was a, like the wild west for genre names at that at that time 2019 to 2020 was a crazy time just like all shit just started like spewing out of soundcloud a whole bunch of stuff that i would collectively label internet music yeah all kind of came out 
and really it came out in full force in like 2019 and 2020 and it was a really exciting time i kind of had this like rumination like you know spo- spoiler for future pods we, we might do a digital episode soon but i kind of had this oh, sure. I kind of had this thought process where the the alienation and like kind of the construction of of community via online spaces is something really interesting as it pertains to like internet music scenes, you know, this one being one of them. And at its peak, like Digicore to me or whatever we were calling it at the time, kind of exemplified that that peak of like community even in like a time of isolation like height of pandemic where it was like you know very anxious and but also like this strong bond of like creative like explosion where you would just have like this fucking you know nova gang seven minute freestyle or or whatever with all the artists hopping on like that's a huge moment that we're never going to see again yeah i mean people treat the collectives like they're fucking sniping teams sniping clans and shit like that like, it really does feel like the roster's changed so often. You know, you have a roster announcement for whoever's in it. Like, you know, check the following, you know, right. who's in our local club and shit like that. But, you know, shit, I, I think it's really cool. Like, you see producers, like, really pushing shit in SoundCloud, calling their stuff whatever new genre they want to call it, you know? And then, you know, the artists kind of follow. Everybody's clicked up. It's sick. And, you know, it, like, fucking oozes creativity, you know? Like, Plug has just gotten to a point, even not just Plug, like, stuff in, like, the, the Digicore stuff in, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, every fucking SoundCloud vein, everything is just, like, branching off in so many different directions right now. It's hard to, right. like, not label everything, because right. things really, if you're tapped in, like, things really do sound different. Like, when you, if, if you make, like, I don't know, like, Ame to, like, um, it's Ame, right? Or is it Aim? I don't know. I, I heard them say ame in a couple okay. songs so i am that works i am sold on ame you know yeah. might have just been the, the the pitch shifting and the vocals but i am sold. <laughs> i am sold on ame i've been calling them that so because honestly i didn't really know what it was before so yeah. you know i'm glad that i now think i have the correct name so i can give them their just due because yeah. aim would be kind of yeah. i don't know I mean, if you if you don't like hear people talk about it, it's hard to like really refer to it as anything. You're only just reading it on it, SoundCloud, it's, right? It's all what you can go <laughs> off like phonetically. So, yeah. This is now the part where I sound extremely white, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move. We're gonna move on. <laughs> no, but it's like I don't know, like I may compare it to like fucking Lucy or something, like two completely different yeah. things, right. which I, I guarantee somebody's calling both of them hyperpop somewhere. Something. Or something like that, yeah. But because you don't, yeah. If you don't have a reference for it, then you're just gonna try to name something that sounds like remotely similar. Yeah, to understand SoundCloud, you really do need like a fucking a cheat sheet. Yeah, you need an almanac. You know, like <laughs> yeah. the SoundCloud almanac. What's the? Uh, what was the the little like um the image that went around where it was like SoundCloud history? Look at the producers, and then it's like a giant web of like you have wave here, funk over there. Right. <laughs> It's exactly. like you need that updated to even and it like goes enter back. it. That's the, the answer key. Yeah, it goes back like a decade plus. Like you really have to, if you want to really trace the lineage of everything, you got to go far back because we're yeah. we're deep into this internet shit now. So you got to, there's a lot of history to catch up on. But, uh, yeah. you know, we, we've referred to, you know, Ame a few times on, on, on this episode so far. But definitely my personal favorite artist in the scene. I like all these artists a lot, though. So that's not a, that's not a knock at anybody, but they've been my artist of the year so far this year, coming out with, I think, like legitimately groundbreaking songs. Like shit that I can confidently say I've never heard any other artist do before. And it's kind of, I'm kind of getting the same feeling with Ame that I did in like late 2020, early 2021, when I heard like, you know, Nobu. Or like Rolly Day Two, like those those Yeet songs, like that had some, you know, yeah. had some momentum, like pre Alive. Like I'm kind of getting a similar vibe from Ame, and I was actually put on to Ame. Shout out my good friend Holly. Um, people might know them as uh, HD Angel, but I um, uh, they, they put me on to Ame last year, like early 2021, when um, 
I think it was Ha Ha came out. And uh, they, they sent me the song, and I was like, this is super cool. He sounded a little like Fago ish, for sure. Definitely with like that high register kind of yeah. shit. Yeah, like I'm gonna just keep it a thousand, like you know that whole that whole thing. Um, yeah. Definitely sounded. I never like, noticed that connection until now. It's a good one. Definitely sounded like a Fago ish. I didn't really give a shit because um, I was definitely like obsessed with Fago at the time, um, and I that fit right in. Great song. And then I heard Boom when that came out, which is still one of the best songs of last year. That shit's fucking perfect song. Um, love the like bouncing melodies on the hook the like background vocals that you don't really notice the first few times but they come in later in the like in the song um yeah i mean that song is like hook after hook and it's just like four minutes and i love the little like slow down part like in the last like 20 percent of the song where it kind of just like it's yeah, a repro- screams it's, plug yeah it screams, it's, like, it's screams plug yeah it's definitely one of the best like plug songs from last year um yeah great great fucking song I also even, love the, mm-hmm. I love the um, the tag like we've heard it on Pierre songs before, but like in the beginning of the song where it's like yo, <laughs> it does the it does the like the yo tag, yeah. Um, but yeah, great song. And so that was that was how I was introduced to Ame, and then I kind of heard some other songs last year, but kind of fell out a little bit. And then like earlier this year, like heard a bunch of like what they were doing now. I think what they're doing now is different from what it was last year. It was more like a little more plug focus versus now like all their songs are regalia to me. Yeah, like, now it's like really just so much more grand focused on facts. A lot of high production value shit coming out of mm-hmm. you know the newer stuff. Yeah, yeah there's a big difference. I mean I guess you could say like that in, that enchanted EP which is fantastic, but that would that's more of like a plug and beef yeah. like vibe I guess I I, I could say um but in terms of like all the singles i mean yeah you talk about fucking um all i mean where do you even start with all the singles but like gilly was definitely one where i think is a yeah there, there's a separation shift um function degree is ridiculous oh my fault oh no you're good you're, degree is degree is one of my top like three songs of the year so i mean if you want to talk about degree we, we can talk degree about is fucking degree. crazy because <laughs> like the fucking the song is already amazing and then it does the switch up like for the bridge and you're just like bro <laughs> like, this is incredible yeah. like also do you have any do you have any idea what um in degree like late mm-hmm. in the late in the bridge like before the song is over um let me see if i can pull up the, the lyrics of course nobody's gonna have lyrics to the song because no one like the song has like not many plays yeah it's not even available um sometimes like i can usually make out most of like on the like what they're saying but there's a part where they kind of do like this high pitch thing toward the end um where they they're like it's toward the end of the bridge right before it breaks down you got a timestamp I'm, I'm like on it oh you're on it right, hold on let me let me let me find it this is great radio but i'm trying to, I'm trying <laughs> to see. they're like yeah. it's like they say i mean we never met uh, something like oh wait the lyrics are in the thing the lyrics are in the description on soundcloud oh did i just never notice that it's hard to notice it if you're on mobile i, I don't think you can notice it on mobile it you know what show up. i always listen to it on mobile i never played it on the computer i feel dumb i was like trying to search for it like for like a, a, oh, like a few shit. seconds it's hot wow this is amazing it was Oh, yeah, okay, it was the one where it was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we, we never met someone like you in our damn life. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what, that's what, that's what I thought it was. Um, damn. Yeah, with all, like, the, the vocal, like, gymnastics, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. Ame, I think Ame would, like, really do well. I don't... I, I think the fact that they're emphasizing their vocals over everything and like that a lot of their times like on stuff like at the four like it'll really break into like almost like a like more of a southern like i think like a young thug fan could like appreciate something that ame's doing or something in that camp it, it still feels very focused on like vocal jumps and vocal gymnastics not that like they sound like young thug but <laughs> and then if, if they adopted those kind of beats i think that's like what would help them like blow 
stuff like that. Like a lot of guitars, stuff like you, you get Ame are gonna be. I think they'll blow. It, 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 it could no, work. Which would be which would be a shame because I think the regalia stuff could really like take off. But and it fits, and I think it fits Ame perfectly. Yeah, so. especially with like all the the new like it, it's just so like theatrical compared to somebody like North Zan where like the production is really doing all the gymnastics. The production is really like setting the mood, setting everything, or even somebody like Dev Stacks, where like it's almost like kind of stagnant, just like from the start to the end. But like it's just such a vibe. Like Ame's really right. focused on being a good singer, focused on being a good rapper. Right. Yeah. It's much different. I mean, the 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 vocal dexterity that Ame has definitely reminds me of how it felt to listen to artists in the beginning that I hadn't heard before, like a Young Thug, like a Cardi as an example, like a Yeet, obviously, most recently, some other artists in there as well. You brought up Fago. Fago's a really good comparison. Very, like, the, the, similarities, exactly Fago. the similarities are definitely there, um, yeah. especially in like the 2021 stuff. Um, yeah. There's definitely like a, I think, a, a singularity when you listen to to some of what Ame was was yeah. doing um, and comparing it to Vago, and that's a, you know, I, I mean that comparison favorably because I'm not, yeah, I, I fuck with, I, I love both artists, so, but yeah, I mean, shit, the every song, I mean, that's come out like this summer. I mean, like on me, degree, profanity, Africa. Africa is crazy. Africa is a really good one. Another one of like the best. Not songs royal ate that of the year. Crazy beat. Chargers a sick beat also um and then biden oh, which shit. i i love that in biden they he kind of said he's like bidden <laughs> so as uh, sh shout out joe bidden um that, that's a that's a phenomenal song as well so yeah i mean i can't i can't Man, leading the youth i can't say i can't say i can't speak highly enough excuse me about all Maid's music and what they've been doing i would put like all their singles uh, you know, near the top of like my favorites yeah. this year, and then at the four is a great record. Yeah, we like, do need to get P on this. We need to get mm, Patrick on this. Facts, absolutely. I mean, at the four, it kind of has like cool stylistic shifts too, because like Chicken sounds nothing like What Are You Doing, you know. So I think there's like a cool, yeah, there's a cool bit of variety there for like only an eight song album, and obviously What Are You Doing is a fucking masterpiece. So, like, I don't know, that's one of the hardest beats you'll hear this year. Yeah. Chicken was kind of what I was thinking of, where um, it's something where it, it's not like regalia, mm -hmm. really, but like it, it just kind of brought me back to like, I don't know, some like a beat you'd give like Lil Baby or Gunner or something. That's really guitar. That's the one with all the guitars, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it sounds yeah. like a, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like a fucking like um, turbo beat. Like, yeah, thank you. Got yeah. that guy. Uh, but uh, yeah, perfectly it. in that lane. Like, I really do think that's. If they could mix just the orchestral elements with stuff like that, I really think that's like the way out. I think it's great. Ame's dope. I just want to see them, you know, just like keep at it in terms of like keeping the focus at the front of everything. At the four was a good, like, that, that, that's already six months old. Shit. Uh, it, it doesn't feel like it. Shit. <laughs> six months old. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, I think if. I don't know. Now that like Cactus Jack and um, YSL both got like rage artists, I guess mm -hmm. Vago's a rage artist in a way, but um, mm -hmm. associated with it, I want to see them like fight for like people in the regalia scene now. I think Ame to YSL is going to happen. Like they're going to sign him in the off season. Uh, who, who's Cactus Jack going to get? Cactus Since they all got a dabble. Once regalia blows. I guess Cactus Jack, because they're just like this kind of, I think like Jace to Cactus Jack would be like <laughs> Jace the, to Cactus the, Jack. I, the ideal, because you know, like in the off season, they got Fago and Fago was like, you know, had blown up huge at that point. So I don't, you know, I don't yeah. think, I don't think Travis is, you know, listening to fucking like North Zan. I think he would probably gravitate toward the biggest artists of the, mm. of the scene if they had to sign somebody. So yeah, I think that's fair. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, if, if, if you take one thing away from this podcast, like, please listen to Ame. Uh, their music is sick. I have, like I said, nothing but gushing about it. Degree, I mean, I could talk about Degree for 10 minutes. So that, that, that's how much I love that song. Um, kind of like, great. just all their songs like blew my mind. Like, I love the fucking, the Gilly beat is crazy. You know, what are you doing? The snare rolls are some of like the hardest shit you'll ever hear. Like, you play that on good speakers. 
and it'll just like the bee will carry you that, that's how hard it's going so yeah i mean another one where it's like classic royal reset like the whole th- those two producers like really laced on me with some great stuff this year yeah reset has been killing everything yeah even I mean, even like their OG, like their um solo songs where like they're they're rapping and singing like mm-hmm. sick as fuck yeah, I was gonna say it would be a good time to talk about reset now as like a, a dual threat artist, kind of like in a Benji Cole, Benji, a Benji Cole, Benji Cole uh, uh, lane, where they kind of yeah, their own solo shit is is great too, and in, uh, in conjunction with like their essential producing work. Yeah, like ben, um, Benji Cole, <laughs> fucking reset, uh, definitely like has more of from what I could tell, like cause a lot of this stuff from like Reset Royal, I think is deleted now, but I could I think uh. Risa has definitely a bit of a plug and be background stuff in that lane, working with those kind of artists, but definitely like took well to like all the orchestral like elements that they're incorporating into the music. At this point, I want to know like the quality of like, where are they getting like, are they using like contact? Like, what are they doing? Like, how are they making all of this sound so clean and stuff like that? Like a lot of it sounds like professional quality, which I doubt they're getting like violinists on the records. It's all synthetic, but that would be cool. Right live you know those like um you know how sometimes they'll do like the the live orchestration like oh videos on youtube of like chief keith songs or something like they've done that before where keith has performed some of his tracks like a live orchestra in the background somebody's uh, definitely gonna tag that with regalia if it's ever a right music genre we 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 need that for <laughs> like we need a live performance uh with some orchestration with some uh, orchestral vibes in the background sure. Yeah, but I'm, I'm I'm looking through resets like catalog. They have like so much shit like under so much with Ame, so much um Jono, uh, Jono um FTF. I don't know how to say their name unfortunately. Oh yeah, Jono. Yeah, like a lot of good stuff. Collabs with Royal. They were like one of the big three. It was like Royal Reset and We Love You Ty. I think I hope I'm not leaving anybody out. But as far as I know, in the Hills Collective, those are like the three big regalia producers. Those were the ones whose names I've always seen, so yeah. I'll, I'll I'll take your word for it. Like those were this guy did fuck Jace too. Like you know a lot of a lot of good yeah, shit, for sure. Yeah, now Risa got hits, and I, I think if they just did a solo tape, I I hope it would blow up. I really do. You know I think I think it would uh definitely be a standout project in like whatever's going on in Regalia mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, they got no. they got the vision. No, no question. Part. No, no question. It's definitely a like I think the main producer along with along with Royal, um, where where you know those guys are just they have a clear, definite vision, and they've been kind of like setting what the sound could 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 do and 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 evolve into. So yeah, um, but we also touched on another important figure briefly, uh, Leosh, who's kind of to my knowledge, like a newer figure. Um, I don't know how far exactly back their material goes because I've just listened to a lot of the stuff that's come out this year. But, you know, Layosh and like with Ultralight, um, there's definitely like a, you know, relationship there for Ultralight and like Regalia, things like that. So, I mean, any any knowledge you could you could give? Uh, and Layosh? Yeah. Yeah. Layosh, same. I have no idea who, who they are. They're killing it. Um, most of their stuff is on the Ultralight hosting page. Check out Ultralight Pain Dior if you really like want to be tapped in with like whatever's going on in Regalia, mm-hmm. all of that, because that's where like most of it's on. Like it, and it's just so crazy. Like you'll have such a good tape. Like uh, what's the one with the two like little champagne emojis? Yes. I would yes. like clarification on what that's called, elegant or whatever. Like that that tape. It, the EP is like so good, start to finish. It's actually insane. It's just like hiding away on like ultralight, like for people to find it at some point in, in history. Yeah, because I never, um, when I first looked it up, I was looking for like a hosting SoundCloud page for Layosh, but then like I never, eventually I obviously yeah. found ultralight, but like I didn't know, you know, like a few, a couple months ago when I first heard it, I was like, scrambling for where to listen to it before i ultimately found it yeah like you because the name is two fucking emojis 
Like, how do you look this thing up? It's that don't even get me started. Thankfully, I I, I found the SoundCloud, and there's also like a, <laughs> a YouTube like link for it now. So, oh, that's dope. Yeah, there's 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 a couple of different things. It's also got like a awesome cover art, dude. Dude, yeah. Like again, like back with the North Zan thing. Like even like the aesthetic has kind of gone past just being like Final Fantasy, right? Like Kingdom Hearts stuff because a lot of people believe like that. But yeah, like, it's this like a, is it's like, like a dope ass cover. Yeah, almost like a um a slightly like modern art version, like of yeah that, of that cover. So yeah, really sick. Yeah. Um, none and, none uh, none to me is definitely one that caught my ear as well. None to me. Perspective, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's a great song. So that was another one that I had heard. Um, I'm fairly looking at the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's they've got plenty of great stuff from this year that I've checked out. I don't know exactly how far yeah. back the career goes. Yeah, honestly, it feels like just 2022, 2021. But Deathbed is another good one on Ultralight. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a great song. I think I I sent that to you the other day. Yeah. The one with October's on the beat, the bro, dude. Like yeah. just stuff hiding. This stuff is hiding. It like it's it's yeah. a fucking shame. Like Lil Lo- needs to get some flowers for being a dope fucking regalia artist. And um the I'm looking at uh the what, what the fuck do you call this? Like the two champagne emoji tape, whatever it is, the the prod on it, like all reset, all royal, all pink girls eighty eight. Yeah, like uh Tor and Barrios, like like this is a stacked fucking production. One team. of the one of the best production lineups like any Regalia project has had. Outside of just say. working with one producer, yeah. Yeah. I mean it's just a it's all of the important names in the scene, I I, I would say. So from a production standpoint. Um but yeah, this is like Leos definitely needs to get flowers. You you said it better than me. Just being um, fucking dope. <laughs> like, yeah. the, that actual EP, I'm just going to call it Champagne. The Champagne EP yeah. is another, like, one of my favorites of the year. Um, has this, like, very kind of, like, lush atmosphere that I loved and kind of loved since first listen. And deceptively, like, hooky, I would say, for the fact that, like, you know, initially it might sound kind of like unapproachable yeah i think i think it's pretty beautiful honestly like it's yeah. beautiful music keeps a lot of the plug and b stuff in there as well mm-hmm. like, and do the tracks like reset did and stuff like a lot of the plug and b like almost like synths like the mills in there still in that vein but like the drums are just completely different it's right. all super slow i mean not, not slow but like mid-tempo like not as like upbeat as like you'd get in like a plug and b song but um yeah. and then the vocals remind me of something like you'd get from North Zan. But Layosh kind of seems like North Zan but less fucking dark. You know? 100%. Like the vocals are very similar, but like with Layosh it's still very bright, still in that anywhere in that you know, that plug and B realm. It's dope. Dope stuff. You know, even though Deathbed is a dark song, but definitely check out Deathbed if you need to check out any Layosh single, in my opinion. That shit is just absurd. What I think is so cool about all these artists that we're discussing within the regalia scene is they're all unique voices and they're going over unique production that even though it can all fit under an umbrella is separate enough that the artists, the sound is almost tailored per artist. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Where it's not just a one size fits all. You hop on this, this boilerplate beat, and now you do it, and now you do it. It's all, it's a general sound aesthetic and vibe. But even within the aesthetic, they're all doing their own little pockets of it. Where like a Leo song is not going to sound like a North Zan song. It's not going to sound like an Ame song. It's not going to sound like a Dev Stack song. You know. Yeah, so surprisingly little collaboration once you get out of the, like the producers because like Royal Reset do everything together, do everything. but like yeah has like I don't think North Zan has ever like interacted. Maybe no, maybe that's like Ocean. Thing. They probably it's, have songs together. It's interesting to me how there is that distinction, where it's like oh they actually just did a song. Sorry. <laughs> uh, well, uh, hey, but your point still stands because I think it relates to like Ame and Devstack for people like that, you know, where it's like Ame doesn't do features, like he doesn't have features. That's a good point. 
So it's some, it's like, I feel like there's a, there's a, there's community and, and, you know, similarities via production, but sound features, how each artist is kind of like fitting themselves into the overall aesthetic, very different. And I think very unique because you go back to like artists that were this talented in an emerging scene you go back four years ago in 18 plug and B those artists were obviously in a collective a little different, but they were still, they were doing stuff like collaborative versus this is a little more, we each do our own thing, which I find pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty fascinating. Like I made the joke about it earlier when I, in like the intro is like Slay world soldiers, you know, like, but that wasn't really like a, like a strong collective. I don't think it was ever a collective actually. I think they all come out and say now that like people like fans kind of put them together. They just like referred to like the scene at large. Right. They just like but, uh, made, they just like made, yeah, but they, they collab they just, with they, each they, other. Yeah, they just like, do they were a lot very of songs still focused. Yeah. They're more of a collective than anybody like involved in regalia or whatever. It's not even close. Yeah. It's not even close. It's not even close. But, yeah. Um, I mean like they were all like, you know, you, you could find hundreds of songs with like, you know, Thrill Boy or Zang Gang beats for like all these people. Like there was, and obviously the artists together, you know, all these like summers and autumn songs, all these like Can Can and summer songs, you know, Goonie, the whole nine. So yeah, they all yeah. had like, they had, they definitely had more of a relationship, I would think, than some of these artists in Regalia, which is not, it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It, there, there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I just find it interesting that like I'm, I'm comparing this scene in terms of like potential to something like plug and B, you know, three, four years ago. Yeah. This really seems like disconnected. Yeah. It felt like this, this scene right now, this regalia scene has already made fantastic music and has like untapped potential for the long term. And it's like freaking, um, you know, plug and B to me had, had that same potential. Yeah. And obviously I think it sought out lived up to that potential. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, like, early summers, early, like, autumn, all that, like, those are classics, like, when you get into, like, 2018, 2019. But, like, even now, like, Plug and B is, like, such a different genre. Like, the producers, so, so like, different. really, you like, have, carrying that shit. Yeah, you have, like, a lot of different people attempting to do something with that, even as it, like, overseas, with all, like, the French scene and stuff like that. You have, like, different, yeah. you have different variations onto it where, you know, it's amazing what happens when, like, a, a thing that, you know, kind of emerged from like the pits of SoundCloud, you know, has, has made such an impact. So we're hoping, I'm hoping personally that Regalia has the same kind of impact. Yeah, hopefully. There's like parallel, like kind of sounds coming out, which are also like drill influenced and stuff, but they're not like Regalia, but the producers definitely overlap. Like, right. I know I've, I don't want to say Glory T, but is it Glory T? I think Glory T has had um, some Regalia songs, but they're also big into like that new, Call of Duty samples wave. Yes, yeah. yes. hear me out. <laughs> the new, yeah. uh, we, we, we got a whole, we got drill coming from Rage and then we also have drill coming from Plug and B in a way, which is this, but you know, right. there's all, all sorts of crazy shit going back in the underground right now. And it's, it goes to show how influential that sound in like the early 2010s, like the whole Chief Keef, those kind of like, that really like hard hitting, like aggressive kind of style, like drum, per drum percussion is like, still changing shit up like it's been like 10 years at this point but it's still coming back and influencing things i think undoubtedly, it's ridiculous i think undoubtedly like the trinity of like influential artists over the last decade has been keith and then young dog and then cardi i think have been the the lineage of of influence for what soundcloud yeah. is and i would say keith probably has the most influence he clears um, it yeah, just because of all the pr on the production side too. I, I think it used to be Thug, but I think Keith definitely overtook, you know, just with this in the last couple of years, how much of, you know, quote unquote internet music is indebted to Keith. Um, I know there's obviously going to be a lot of, a lot of Cardi as well in the coming years. There already has been, but with Rage, especially, you know, especially just because of, because of, just a whole lot of red being the monster album that it was in in in, in like you know under, underground hip hop culture. So yeah. yeah. Um when it comes to popularity of regalia, 
I think it could expand to other artists. And I think if I had to, we, we, we joked about Cactus Jack and like, you know, the, the, the like YSL. I actually think that there is a, there is a overlap potential with like opium and, mm. and regalia because, you know, we, little like inside baseball here for the listeners. Like you, you mentioned, you have a, a little bullet point here about destroy lonely, destroy lonely. I think is someone that would sound fantastic over these like Royal reset beats. Yeah. I, I think it's perfect. Ken less so. Um, and Ken has his own like things, but like, I think, I think lonely would sound incredible. Even like Lancey Fo, like they, I think they would sound fantastic over these beats. And Lancey's I would like, great them. point. yeah, Lancey, Lancey I think would sound really good. Um, I think I would like them to try it. Like I would love to see that happen. I mean, I would like lonely to drop anything, but you know, I would <laughs> anything, like, I, anything, I, please, I, anything, I anything am, at I am, all. I am a destroy lonely, uh, appreciator in this house, but, um, I would just like, I think that I'd be really fascinated to see what could come out of that because we both artists have done, especially lonely. I mean, they, <laughs> you had him over the running up that hill sample recently. Um, <laughs> That other song, which was a really beautiful, like, song, was that You and I? That was a fucking great song um, that came out, like, or it was unreleased, but it, you know, it, it leaked, like, a week or two ago. Um, there's, like, these, like, they're definitely trying different things. So I would like Lonely to hop on that because I think he has a good voice for it. I think Lancey has a good has a good voice for it. And Lancey also does the some cool, like, weird vocal inflections and shit. So I think it would fit over that production style. So I think opium has a chance. If I was going to pigeonhole one kind of emerging group as a way to catapult the sound into like a mainstream context, I think opium could do that. Yeah. Um, I think with, with lonely other people have kind of had that same idea. I've seen like, if you go to like, we love you ties YouTube, like where they post their beats and shit, Mm -hmm. all of them almost have like, uh, Royal X destroy lonely type beat right. deals. And it's like, I don't actually recall hearing destroy lonely on any regalia or anything like that. Or maybe they've done a few. No, cause even there. their, some of their like harder songs kind of have like a sort of similar vibe, but I would never call them regalia. I would say they're like, yeah. They're just a little bit to the left of that, or just a little like they're they're not quite there. But like songs like Devil Wears Prada, um, Layover, uh, some of the earlier stuff off the Underworld EP, you've got some shit. I would say like Do the Most. I think Do the Most kind of has the similar vibe. If you know, if you know that song, um, I actually don't. I'm, okay. I'm like a little like tapped out of. Um like destroy lonely and destroy people lonely. In like an opium right. maybe like i know a little bit more about ken carson but um right as far as i know like a lot of their production is like kind of just like trappy stuff really like influenced mm-hmm. by like the ambient plug wave going on which kind of connects like that starts with like tg pretty much and like kind of ends up with like whatever you get now with like shed theory and like 20 world and shit right but uh right. yeah just stuff influenced by that but I, they need to start being influenced by fucking regalia that's what they yeah. need to start doing no i, I, I think I, that'd be great I think it would too. And like I said, like there's a couple like lonely songs that I could really see as being like almost quite there. Like I could do the most, but it's not exactly there. Um, I don't think it's like impacted the, you know, quality songs or anything. I just like, I could think, I think that it would be a very interesting experiment to see where that happens. And I think Ken personally, like his newest album really wasn't it in my opinion. So like I would appreciate if Ken went, Lonely, I have less of an issue with because Lonely's been on a bunch of different production styles. But I think Ken, yeah, I would appreciate if he like stopped or you know chilled a little on like the what like boilerplate rage stuff and like did some <laughs> regalia shit. Because I think his voice, he's been changing his voice a lot lately too. I think that would be cool. Yeah, true. Um, different production, I think I would like it more. But yeah, I mean that's just I think that's a interesting thought experiment. But you know, even people like. Baby Santana could definitely do shit like this. Like, Uzi, Hell yeah. Uzi has already done shit like this, but could definitely... Maybe unintentionally Uzi, yeah. It might right. have the biggest it's regalia song already, song, and it's been uh, like a uh, week or two. I, I, could definitely, I could definitely see those, like, 
I could easily see a baby Santana song with like Bailey or like whatever, you know, like, Oh yeah. Um, speaking of shout out to Bailey because Bailey produced kiss and tell the Ame song, which is a phenomenal shit. song that the vocal shit that he's, that Ame is doing on that track is insane. Like I love the hook so much. Um, he's got a fucking like Hansel and Gretel reference or something <laughs> on there. That's just hilarious. But yeah, yeah like, in terms of like other producers like in Regale and like that sound, definitely Bailey, Prod Bailey. Check them out. Glow Your Crazy is a great producer. <laughs> we mentioned Swish before. Felix. Yeah, King Felix. Octobers. Check all of them out because like we're going to leave people out, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Just because it's there's a bit of overlap with other stuff going on in like the underground. Mm-hmm. And like they may have great regal- regalia songs, but they might be known for something else, like somebody like a Glory T. But. Man, you gotta check out some of these kids because they're great. All the beats are sick. I I want to know where they're coming from, like with the tech, like what what are we using these days? Like what plugins are we using to get the the really nice orchestral sounds? If we're still using like fucking purity strings, I'm gonna be mind blown. <laughs> it's, it's it's they're they're making it sound good. Yeah. Well, and that was that was spoken like a true producer because I only understood about like fifty percent of what you were saying. So <laughs> that was a. That was a little inside producer knowledge uh, on on the show. I don't know. I've never had purity in my life. I they just keep talking about it. So one artist I want to ask you about that we haven't touched on yet that I really like their music, but I don't know how to fucking pronounce their name. So this is a this is an L for me. Um, DC, you know, um, Dikashi. Dikashi, thank you. I think it's I think it's Dikashi. I hope okay. so. Otherwise, no, we're gonna say you know, Dikashi. <laughs> yeah, you you know how you know how I get with X's, you know, uh, on with some of these, some <laughs> of these uh, some of these names. Like it's pretty it's pretty bad. There's a uh, we talked about earlier, but when when we did a uh, uh, the BMB Jewel Set episode years ago. Oh my I, god! I pronounced it like I think Jewel Exit or something. It, I didn't. I didn't do Jewel it. Jewel Exit's hilarious. I and I, I. I mean, we spent like the first five minutes of the show just absolutely clowning me for, for, oh, for no. pronouncing. Or no, I think I mentioned it on a RCB pod a few years back, and the and the our producer Wyatt put in the pod just dis, in the <laughs> description like this is how you actually pronounce it. <laughs> So. Yeah, you said um, Astarel earlier, and that kind of threw me for a loop because, like, I've never actually heard somebody say Astarel out loud. <laughs> like in my, like, I know it is, but like, I look at it and I'm like, it's Astarel. Like, don't don't fuck with me. It's Astarel. You get that, fucking Jewel Set for some reason. Like, yeah, that's Jewel Set. Please, like, don't be silly. But like, fucking, you said Astarel. I'm like, fuck, it's Astarel. Good thing you said it first and not me. But um, <laughs> that 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 says a lot. <laughs> Yeah. If you How actually, online. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like Lucifer, Lucy Four. Like, what? Yeah. gosh, that's. Yeah, I hear people just calling them Lucy at this point for like a, a year at least. I don't oh, know if they're still 100%. going by that. I have no idea. The internet music artist names. It's basically just like knowing which ones you can get away with saying in public. That's, <laughs> yeah. Pretty that's much kind exactly of that. that's kind of where we're at right now like if i have to like like i'm just i'm sorry i'm never saying the words diamonds on my dick in public like you're not you would have to imprison me in guantanamo to get that out of me i'm sorry i can't i can't say it <laughs> man yeah like some of these it's really hard right. to like take yourself seriously you mentioned the genre names earlier like like these genre names are so absurd but like the artist names have already been absurd for like a few years now a hundred percent man it's ridiculous um what else so we mentioned all the great producers like other other people like really fucking with the sound i had some quick shout outs like we obviously like 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 lucy vert lucy vert has uh touched on regalia for a bit i don't know how to say this kid's name i'm sorry dixu uh i believe the tag is d1 yeah so Uh, I believe so. That one I've only heard like a song or two, so I can't. I'm not yeah. like super familiar with their work. Um, they have a few really good tapes. If you're still like into more bass in the regalia lane, but you know you've already cleaned through all the other like right. discogs. Your SoundCloud is just a mass of of likes from like Reset and Royal Production. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you've already cleared everybody out, they've um. The Edge of Glory is a really good EP. They put out a couple months ago. The production list is like October's Bailey, Glow Your Crazy Reset. Like, 
like all these people like you should already be like in touch with if you need to get more they just put out another ep which is like kind of bridges the alien and the regalia waves Mm -hmm. like in a way which is dope a lot of like overlap now especially with those two like kind of scenes Right, it's right, like right. dope shit, but Dix is a good one. Shayo is another one. How do you fuck? How do you say this kid's name? Shayo, Shayo, whoever they are, good on them. They put out a tape called uh, Elegance. The last few songs are just some of the best regalia beats I've ever fucking heard. Whoever did those needs the, I don't know, Purple Heart or some shit because they went fucking ape. Yeah, uh, I. Man. I put this on my wish list recently because I saw it had a Fazo and a Rich and Mary feature, and I meant to. I saw you had rated it, and also shout out to shout out Ben, created by Rejection, rated as well. Oh hell yeah! Um, so I definitely crazy wanted, taste. Definitely wanted to to peep that. I I might as well peep that after the episode. Uh, it's hell only yeah. like fucking fifteen minutes. I'll definitely knock yeah. that out. So it's. it's- so many different production styles on that tape and like regalia is only like a little part so i don't want to say they like represent regalia as like a whole or anything but like everyone i thought was done well high production quality good choruses right. that kid's going far you could just tell danny kyoko even has like dabbled yeah. in the shit that, a bit that crow, crow record is crazy crow yeah. is, danny is like going crazy yeah. this year danny has really been i mean since like 20 like uh yeah. since like i mean previous years like they've been really um going up doing like the new age like snap shit um, yeah but then kind of like changing up different styles like their their tapes are never the same um so yeah that shit's fucking sick that um yeah. that elysium album they did was really good too that elysium album is incredible i i don't know why it, it wasn't clicking at first i came back to it a couple months ago and it's like my favorite tape of the year it's up there it's up there at least like probably top two top three yeah that's but- a- that's, that's a, super a great, great tape. That's a great even tape. even on there. Sometimes like with uh, was it friends or foe? Like I heard like the little orchestral stuff, and I'm like, I never put it together, but I thought maybe they were like slightly influenced by like what's going on in like regalia and stuff. And then on crow, they just straight up got like I think like who who did a uh, who did uh the 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 regalia beats on crow? Do you know? There was a few. Oh, you know, um, was it um it was like with you? Oh, King Felix and Reset did the last track. Right. That, well, also, the, yeah, great one. they also got fucking, um, um, who else did they get on there? I feel like there's a name I'm, I'm missing that they had that did a lot of the, that did all the shits. Uh, um, on that tape? Yeah, on that tape. It was Max Vaughn. Oh, yeah. It was Max Vaughn. Yeah, it was Max Vaughn. Yeah, I think that was it. Um, yeah, yeah. Max Vaughn. Also, they also got like a big head beat, which was interesting. But, <laughs> yeah um but yeah shout out, shout out to danny just for all the work that they've done the last like two years has been yeah. know, like a cr- like one of the best like out for sure yeah um, a lot last. of stuff in plug with regalia and like i mean not with regalia but like now that they're doing that and they like came from like a vamp plug that that's mm-hmm. what they call their stuff yep. usually yeah like, that, that was that was like out. some of the shit they were doing last year like yeah yeah well, it was shit, like the they're making best, good progress. Good it shit. was like the the best possible version of like Vamp Leak, like for sure, <laughs> for sure. No, oh, no, no shade to Vamp Leak, but also um, yeah. one one artist I want to mention that we haven't talked about is uh, Bino, o- only Bino. Um, Bino? Yeah. The, who am I? Am I who's, like? Who's done um, their song uh, "Gone"? I think it's like percent gone or whatever. Uh, how do you that, spell Bino again? I'm like blanking. Whoa. Well, it's only Bino, so it's. Oh, only Bino. Never mind. I know who this is. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was referring to them. Yeah, that, that that's on me. No, but, you said that, and I thought Beenix, and I'm like, what? Oh <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm like, they make music, <laughs> or yeah. they they rap or some shit. Um, but, um no, but the, their song, um, yeah. the off the fucking um, the little like EP, um, their song like Gone or gone pound whatever it's called that has yeah. that's that's got a bailey and a fucking royal production and is one of the best regalia beats i've heard for sure like that is a the way it builds up for like 45 seconds in the beginning <laughs> before it comes in yeah, uh, and it's, it, it's a big song too like Bino is like a big cosign for this kind of sound in the yeah. same way that you'd get from like somebody if like slump or uh sgp west if they're fucking with yeah. this probably the bigger artists who have like dabbled in 
Absolutely. And the way they do that, like, the hook is so crazy. Like, hold on a second, what do you just hear my damn phone? Like, it's just, it sounds a lot like the way that it builds up sounds a ton like fucking um, something that you could have heard coming out of, like, Chicago. Or even, like, um, even, like, something off of, like, a fucking early, like, Dirk song. Um, that's kind of huh. like what it reminded me of too. Cause like Dirk wasn't always doing what he's doing now. Like he had like more grand beats, I feel like back in the day, but that might've just been me. Yeah. Like, it also the, could be the drill connection. Like, yeah. you so know, like for a the, while, drill music was big with those strings. Right. So that's kind of like the pieces that I could put together, but yeah, great song. Love that song. Let Bino, you know, had a, had a couple good tapes this year, so definitely uh, yeah. wanted to give Bino a shout out and um, yeah. just for that song alone. And there was, fortunately, I lost my train of thought, which was I was going to talk about another artist. Oh yeah, something that we kind of had as like, and we kind of spoke about off air and like are these adjacent sections to like what could be regalia, but not really. It's kind of similar. Was some of these like recent like Lucky and Summer stuff? Oh, that kind of stuff, but, yeah. Yeah, where it's like that Summer's album. It's kind of like what I was saying about Lonely earlier, albeit different production styles, but it's not far off from what the Regalia sound is. You know, it it, it could in in the Venn diagram, it's got like a, a little sliver. Yeah, Regalia is definitely part of like this greater, like kind of like convergence on like building off of like. Like I keep saying drill and like I, I it's not really to do with the lyrical style or like anything like you know related to like what what the lyrics are or anything like that but it's more so just like the sounds that were big like when Chicago drill was like really like the main sound and how that built off a trap but you got like summers definitely like tapping into those sounds and like a lot of rage producers are really big into that now taking like those kind of styles and then taking like only a little bit of like the sense that you'd get in rage and like kind of incorporating into that so it, it's it's just kind of like a new kind of like trap music which is which just comes from like the rage kind of side of things and stuff like that more so than coming from like plug and be like how regalia is doing it but yeah it's all part of this larger like kind of framework of like people just building off of chief keef and shit like that and, like that goes all the way back to um like uh, everybody in plug and plug and B loves Zaytoven. Zaytoven is like, mm -hmm. you know, just one of the OGs yeah. for all of this stuff. And so, not that they made drill, but like their kind of trap beats, like that right. kind of early sound was like that's always been in vogue in a way in like plug plug and B circles. Just like you'll have like Zaytoven worship clips. Yeah, yeah. Well, like that. That's where a lot of this comes from. So yeah. like all that early trap stuff is just now it's in vogue in a new way. I and could like definitely you'll... see how some like Benji Cole beats are just like obviously like a the our version of Zaytoven like where the 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 younger version of Zaytoven like the way that they do the fucking um some of those beats that they did for for Surge uh, also some of the beats that they did for um like even on the Eat record like Taliban definitely sounds like a a Zaytoven yeah, strip back the synths yeah, and stuff like a Zaytoven beat with with a twist. You know? Yeah, I see that in Zangang a lot. A hundred percent. Zangang definitely has like a lot more of the Zaytoven. Very like Zangang. Zangang's beats are very like warm and inviting kind of way, kind of like those Zaytoven beats for um, what was the what was like the Chief Keef like, R and B ish album, Glo Glotoven, right? Glotoven, yeah. Yeah, that kind of gives me that feel. Yeah, well, shit. Now the shit back in style and in another way, it's kind of crazy. But um, yeah, the Lucky singles are like a kind of an example of that production style. Um, I brought up the Call of Duty samples thing before, but uh, I've, I've seen a lot of beats by like Glory T, Hecto, Phoenix, Victim. Yeah. These are all like Rage, Drill, victim, not, victim not Rage. Sure, Victim's yeah. a Rage producer, but uh, Victim, yeah. But Glory T, Phoenix, they're really big on like doing these Call of Duty themes, Drill, Trap Beats. And uh, they incorporate these like really weird squelchy synths, and uh, that stuff comes from people like Amir out of Rage. Amir is a fucking incredible producer. Holy shit! Yeah. Amir at this point, like their their collabs with Benji Cold, shit like that, man. It's it's actually absurd. Like I I think that kid is gonna be like like the next Benji in a way. Like I could see their beats like being so. Mm -hmm. uh, 
like sought after in a way that Benji was with like the Asian rock shit. In a, like oh, the yeah. early like 2019, 2020. I could really see that. But like it's already kind of bleeding out into stuff with the alien glow scene, the cod sample scene. Mm-hmm. You know, which is but, definitely like, like there's all these overlapping names. It's kind of hard to keep track, but it, it is, it is, it is definitely <laughs> hard to keep track. But it's also very exciting. You kind of feel yeah. like every six months there's there's some new development that you feel like you've missed out on as it was happening. But you know, as it turns out, most people have. So even when you go in to listen to stuff, you know, all, all the stuff has like a thousand plays or less. So you know. Yeah. Uh, there's you check back in a month that has like 10 times the amount you know right it's, it's it's fast moving it's part of what makes a lot of you know internet music subculture is very exciting um and i know that's like kind of like a fucking dweeb thing to say but at the same time um you know for people like us who have such like an enthusiasm for for this stuff and for these like new styles of rap music as it keeps evolving and changing like there's there's the sky is the limit for the potential in a lot of these in a lot of these scenes, and they're like super. They're all super unique as like part of this like you know, th- this like ecosystem. So the fact yeah. that the fact that you can listen to like the newest summer's album as an example and be like, oh shit, that's like that's really close to like what this like regalia template is. You know, like yeah, you listen to beats like fucking like so much cheese or whatever. Or like um, swing your pole, like those, yeah. those those ones are really similar, like with the horns and shit, and then with the little the way the synths come in, like yeah, the, yeah. those are you can kind of see that there's always influence feeding into like these different styles, you know, they're taking it from each other, and you could almost like unintentionally like be really reductive about it, and like hear a regalia be after being introduced to like summers like doing the newer glow shit. And be like, yeah, shit, well, they're doing the glow shit too, but, like, there's this whole deep fucking chasm of, like, regalia stuff where it really just sounds like its own fucking thing. It's like, wait, no. Everybody in their own corner is doing something completely different with regalia and then, like, you know, the alien shit. You know, it's just crazy. There's just really just this diversity in SoundCloud right now. And I keep saying plug, but at this point, none of this shit is plug. Like, we're, yeah. we're on to, like, a whole new, like... Yeah, because you know, I mean, I know. modern plug these days is you know what I think of like the Mookies and the sixty hundred Js and the Tony yeah. Snows and that you know the Cash Cash adjacent um, yeah. styles. That's kind of you know I kind of hear that more. Then you can branch out and you can get you can start going down the rabbit hole of like you know different East Coast stuff, whether it's like Surf Gang or affiliates and stuff like that. And then you there's all this stuff that you could you could probably make a stepping stone like kind of diagram from you know how like people are like i'm gonna you know the stupid thing where it's like uh the wikipedia game like i'm gonna type in a name and then i have to get to this name (laughs) and like five tries or whatever by going yeah that's kind of how you could do with with this it would be a lot easier with uh with this sort of on soundcloud because everything is like interconnected while also being part of its own shit and that's what i love so so i don't know if you feel the same but i'd like there's such a i think once you like one scene you're gonna like them all because there's like a kinship yeah so it definitely feels like we're putting like the pieces together like kind of after it's all happening anyway yeah you know it's it's especially when you get back into like you mentioned uh people like uh booth pack and you mentioned people like that uh producers like um young brando and neighbor and stuff like that a lot of that is kind of getting rebranded to like Mm -hmm. dream plug or like space jug but even that kind of sound there's a lot of overlap with like newer like kind of drill influenced like developments now like the fact that like there's this commonality between all these different like plug scenes and they're all like taking drill aspects in their own ways like with like bane plug and stuff it's kind of crazy that it, it, it just all at the same time, like it's all coming back in vogue. Absolutely. Like, um, but like to, to talk more about BAME, it's like, um, uh, like Valencio too is like the main producer putting stuff out like that. And I don't think they necessarily have a background in dream plug, but um, a lot of the artists that they work with d- definitely do. It's, uh, gotten called halo wave, stuff like that. Uh, glory plug. Yeah. And, I've, I've seen that. Yeah. It, it's called, it's called plug like 
often, but like it isn't really anymore. It, it sounds more like dark trap or some shit like to me than anything plug related just like kind of like happy enthusiastic dark trap and not necessarily anything yeah. like super morose it's like they're not summoning like satan they're like summoning how many ways they're yeah. gonna like, shoot you or like rob you yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's different it's different it's, it's awesome. like we're it's like we're gonna steal your girl type shit but not <laughs> <laughs> not like i'm summoning lucifer or whatever the fuck so yeah it's oh, a, a little yeah. different vibe, but it, it kind of has that same like aggression and, and darkness and like definitely like a bleak kind of thing. Yeah, that that whole stuff is like just uh, back from the dead to worship. That's 100%. how it started. And, like now it's totally like spawned into its own thing. But that's what I mean. Like different kinds of early drill are like mm. permeating different parts of like SoundCloud, you know? Absolutely. Like it does that in Regalia in one way, it does that in the, the the COD samples in one way, and it does that in Bame in a totally different way. Like at this point, Chief Keef is like, yeah, like I don't even know. Like you could even say the cemetery shit. Oh, uh, you absolutely total, could. total the other way. The cemetery himself would tell you. 100%. Yeah, like yeah, the, it's like the witch house right. drill. It's like yeah. its own. Like in like the last three years, like what the fuck happened? <laughs> like out of nowhere, I feel like all of this stuff is coming back in style, but it's yeah. dope as shit. And and that's and that makes sense because this is like all stuff that a lot of these like people grew up on. So, um, so crazy. You can, you can kind of you can see exactly. So you know who knows? Maybe, maybe in a decade we'll be getting like the the revival of uh, of Regalia. But uh, in, oh my god, that'd be hilarious. That would be hilarious. Like Regalia 2.0 uh, revisionism history, where it'll you know. Yeah. But maybe it'll be out of style to wear like you know Vivian Westwood, and they'll bring back the orb necklaces, <laughs> like repurposed in ten years. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, orb necklaces for sure. Well, oh, this was a great discussion. Yeah, uh, for sure, man. We're, we're gonna, you know, we we might have. I I plan on having you know uh, our our guy Santor say here come back on the show. Maybe when we talk about like shed theory in like six months or something. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, there's yeah, a lot was, going on in that a realm. Lot going on it's there. Bullshit. Yeah another scene that i'm a big fan of right now um but until that point i'm gonna go listen to a bunch of fucking ame songs and uh fucking uh, north sand uh, songs and uh decent horse i'm caleb aka ultimate audio thank you guys so much for listening we'll see you when we see you on the next edition of living off borrow time our outro yeah. music is stagnated pace by can kick and we hope you guys all have a good week peace Never stop. It ain't gonna 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 never stop. 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 Stop.